Hello everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle and to my latest episode of New Album Spotlight. And as a special treat, I have Jana with me. Hi. And I brought Jana here because she's a big fan of this group as well, so I thought it would be fun to get her perspective as the non-prog non wife. <laughs> Even though you've heard a lot of prog by now, but... Um, this is D. Virgilio Morrison Jennings and their second album, Sophomore. Or as I call them, Troika. Troika. <laughs> or is the... there a new Troika album? <laughs> <laughs> and some of the band members, like Neil Morse, basically refers to this as the trio. So, okay. interesting. And Nick D. Virgilio, I just saw an interview with him. He likes to refer to it as DMJ, for short. Oh, so, I like that. Yeah. So that's kind of a easier way, probably, to say it than the full... DMJ. D. Virgilio Morrison Jennings. Because that's a mouthful. Yeah. But, yeah, why I brought Janie here is because she's a big fan of this group as well. Even though they're starring a lot of great prog heavyweights, you know, D. Virgilio, Neil Morrison, Ross Jennings, who are all notable in different prog bands, uh, the music here isn't really fully prog. It's more like folk rock or more of like a classic flavor sometimes they delve mm -hmm. a little into maybe even a country style flavor mm -hmm. but some more you know harmony vocals these three-part harmonies that they're known for the singer songwriter style vibes so uh it's been something that you've really enjoyed especially on the first album that they came out with as troika i loved that album it was probably just... your favorite of the year it came out yeah i mean i i really listened to full albums and that one i did and i liked it Number one album of the year. Yeah. Their first album uh, came out last year, earlier last year, 2022. Uh, so now they're out with their sophomore release, which is adequately titled uh, Sophomore. <laughs> <laughs> which it's cool to hear these three musicians blend together because, you know, they're great in their separate bands. You know, Neil Morse, of course, with his solo stuff and Neil Morse band stuff. You've got Nick DiVirgilio, who's now... Uh, drumming for Big Big Train, but of course worked with Neil in the past in Spock's Beard. And then Ross Jennings, who kind of comes as a, a third from his Haken background. Uh, he's an interesting choice to fill and round out this trio. Um, but it's cool because I'm a huge, massive fan of all three of these guys. And it's cool that they're, even though they have those prog roots, that they're coming together to do something decidedly not prog because they like to explore other genres mm. and other ideas. I think that's great when musicians do that, when they like all of a sudden turn out something totally off the wall and different from what they normally do. Yeah. I think it shows range. It does show range. <laughs> and I think uh, Neil Morse, you know, he's dabbled a little bit into some singer-songwriter mm -hmm. type stuff with some of his solo works. And Ross Jennings released a solo album that delved a little bit into it as well. So you could hear the little touchstones of that even in their solo albums before coming mm -hmm. together uh, but now they're fully fledged like this folk rock trio that does these elaborate three-part harmonies that are all so beautiful and so great and what's cool is they all contribute they're all writing different songs in fact you know they each have different songs that they've brought to the table here and collaborated so it's fun picking out who's who's the main writer for each song and i'm pretty sure i know uh, but i'm basically guessing i don't have like mm -hmm. a sheet in front of me of who wrote what but i do not know usually <laughs> The person who takes lead is is the main songwriter as well. So, mm. um, and it's pretty fairly uh, distributed on the album. There's really ten main tracks, and I believe four are written by Neil, three are written by Ross, and three are written by Nick. So you get a pretty even spread, so to speak. So, uh, getting into the the songs proper, the first track is "Hard to Be Easy," which I believe was written by Neil, and I think this is an excellent start to the to the album. Just wonderful acoustic guitar and light percussion and those just beautiful vocal harmonies really start the piece in a great way and it just kind of bustles along and adds more flavors and textures but definitely nails that folk singer songwriter Crosby Stills and Nash vibe I like when they do those like do 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 kind of <laughs> vocal parts you know <laughs> that adds a cool I like this like too. poppy section I really like the lyrics on this one I think it's just kind of a fun take on a relationship so uh-huh <laughs> So. Yeah, so it's a really cool, breezy song that just immediately mm. got me into the record and is a fun listen. That's a pretty easy hit for me on the album. Then we get into Linger at the Edge of My Memory, which I believe was written by Nick DiVirgilio. 
um, beautiful acoustic guitar. This one's a little bit more laid back and kind of heartfelt, you know, uh, still contains a lot of those beautiful harmonies and you almost get kind of a dreamy or quality to the track. Um, how did you feel about this one? I, I liked it. I thought that it was just as like a smooth, I don't know. Yeah, smoother <laughs> like song. A smooth sound, yeah. you know? Yeah, I kind of I, I felt it. that way, like a more laid back, breezy kind of style. Mm -hmm. So that was a really good one. Uh, Tiny Little Fires is a lot of fun. That's next, mm -hmm. with uh, written by Ross Jennings. Uh, he talks about how he wrote that, like, there's like this little xylophone part, you know, <laughs> that it starts with. And he actually played that on, like, his toy his son's toy xylophone while he was playing oh, really? with his son, you know? <laughs> and so that's where that part came, came to his mind and what they built the song around. And this one kind of has a little bit of prog flavor. I felt like this is one of the more uh, interesting musically. There's, there's some interesting keys going on in the background that are almost like Rick Wakeman-esque and you get some cool, uh, cool textures and fun vibes. You know, once again, it, it moves along at a fun pace and has a really interesting, unique uh, drum pattern as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a fun little track that was one that I instantly connected with. I thought it was a lot of fun. I really like Ross's tracks um, on this and on the previous uh, Troika mm -hmm. album. So I agree. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting into some of the more like heartfelt kind of uh, ballad type songs. I this think one I'm made me cry. Probably e gonna every time I listen to it. I'll probably it let you cry. talk more about this one. Yeah, right where you should be. Uh, very clearly to me, written by Neil Morse, and definitely leans into more of a country style yeah. vibe in my mind. Like with even some pedal steel guitar in the back, yeah, and a really good like kind of storyteller kind of vibe to it. This one had also the alternate version at the end. Am I skipping yeah. to the end? And I'm not supposed no, to. No, that's okay. Okay, because um, it had and that one was more like a like a acoustic guitar like mm -hmm. sound to it, where this one had like that country flair to it. Yeah, but the lyrics on this one just killed me. You know, like. Like, like we have, like you and I had plans and like, this is deep, deep stuff here. Right. You and I had plans in our lives that didn't know, that didn't pan out. And so like it, this, Ooh, I'm going to cry. This song like made me cry because it was okay to be right where you are. That's like right where you're meant to be. See, I'm crying again. That's Stop. okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> but I just loved it so much and it just really hit me in the right spot. Like yeah. each time I listened to it. So that's okay. beautiful. I'm gonna turn away from the frame for a minute no <laughs> and this is why i wanted your perspective because i think you latch on more to the, the stories and the lyrics yeah. and stuff I than i'm was, able was, to so it was just beautiful and yeah. um just just like a like you're gonna be okay and this is where this is where you're supposed to be and what you have is wonderful and so it was just i just really liked it yeah that's beautiful Sorry. No, I think this is a beautiful moment on the record and a great, yeah. great lyrics to this one. And, and then it played again at the end and made me cry all over yeah. again. And it's cool. The alternate version actually features Ross on the lead vocals, whereas the main album version has mm. Neil on vocals. Okay. So kind of a cool way to switch it up a little bit and get a different flavor. So yeah. I liked that as well. And then we move into The Weary One, which is a, another kind of slower, more... Uh, slower paced ballad kind of feel to it as well written by neil uh as well i believe but you get some cool acoustic guitar and vocals added cello in the track as well just a, a beautiful poignant track i thought with some really cool folky undertones lyrics are great on that one too yeah just yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah just a really great great storytelling kind of vibe and great lyrics as well so and then, uh, you know, after two kind of s slower, maybe more uh, uh -huh. lighter pieces, somber. more somber pieces. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. You get more of a rocker, more just kind of a fun out and out rocker in Mama, right? This was like the prog song to me. I was like, <laughs> mm, they couldn't quite, you know, hold back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're letting their prog come out. <laughs> their prog is peeking out here. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun, more of a rocking type of track. Uh, I believe this was written by Nick. Um, and what's cool is I, they trade vocals a lot in this one. Like you'll mm. hear one sing one line and then another sing it the next. So they basically trade vocals all the way through. It's very quirky and fun. 
Um, but you still get those signature harmonies that this trio is known for. Um, and I thought it was kind of a welcome shift in the pace where it was a little bit more somber, like you mentioned. Very beautiful and poignant and memorable, the lyrics on the previous two songs, but it was a cool switch up to get yeah. more of a kind of a fun rocker It surprised next. me in the, like, because, you know, I'm listening to this and it's all like these mostly mellow, like... Mm-hmm. You know, some of them upbeat. Like, I feel like you can still have a song be upbeat, but also mellow at the same time, meaning it's not, like, in your face. Right. And then, like, all of a sudden this track starts, Mama, and, and I was like, oh, gosh, what <laughs> is this? It almost felt, like, out of place, but I thought it was a good break, I think. Yeah. In in the songs. Cool. So, in the album. <laughs> yeah. And then we get next, I'm Not Afraid, uh, which I believe was also written by Nick. Um, this has more of a playful kind of acoustic guitar feel, breezier, kind of laid back, has this almost jazzy kind of vibe to it. I I really like that towards the end of the track, Nick Mm -hmm. even has this like, all right, you know, this feels good, (laughs) right? You know, like he's just really in the pocket with this kind of groove that just (laughs) continues through the piece, you know, just an infectious groovy section that I thought was a cool little song, just really fun groove Mm -hmm. to it and just really laid back and, and just fun to sit in there and just listen to. So next after that, we get a couple of Ross Jennings tracks. Well, Weighs Me Down is the next track, which is once again, I felt more of a somber mood to this one once again. Get some acoustic guitar and shakers with their like three-part harmonies. Just beautiful. The harmonies in this one really uh, spoke to me. I thought it was really great, almost like a dreamlike quality as it goes through. doesn't really switch up much. It stays kind of in the same lane throughout the track, but it's so beautiful that I, I enjoy it all the way through. It's just a really beautiful display of their harmonies and of just this very singular mood that they're going for in the piece. And then, yeah, next we have uh, Walking on the Water, which gets a little bit of a jazzier, kind of groovier feel to it. I like this one. Uh, Yeah, it's a really fun, cool track with a catchy chorus and just a fun vibe to it. I love Ross's vocals on it as well. Um, Like I said, I always really like Ross's vocals um, and his tracks that he wrote. So I think he's a great contributor to this group. So yeah, you really like this one? I like this one a lot. I thought it was just really fun and... Had a good energy. Good energy, yeah. yeah. And I think it's a good switch up from what I thought was a little bit more somber and like... Yeah, like weighs me down. Is like, yeah, it felt I guess like, it, it fits the title, know, yeah, yeah, and the and theme. And so this one just felt lighter. Yeah, which, you know, makes kind of sense with the just even the mm-hmm. titles of the song. You know, mm-hmm. Walking on Water, you're just... It's a more lighter kind of feel to what you're listening to. So really cool. And then it, basically the besides those extra tracks that we're talking about, the album ends with uh, Anywhere the Wind Blows, which was the classic. first single. Instant yeah. classic. Instant classic. This so good. One of your favorites. Anywhere the wind blows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense that this was the first single. It's very catchy and just classic sound from this band. You know, it's mm-hmm. obviously going to be one of their big signature tracks, you know, so it's just... Another, I I believe this is written by Neil. I think it's pretty obviously written by Neil. Just really laid back, folky track, just catchy and fun. All the things that they're known for. There's not much more to say, I think, just that it's right in line with what they do best. And I believe Neil said he just wrote this sitting like on a beach and just like Mm -hmm. this breezy vibe. And he just kind of wrote this thing that was just... Just like, just that it's just very like a... Like, I'll, wherever the wind blows, that's where I'll be. It's, like, a very, like, carefree, like, yeah. type of, like, freeing type of song. Like, you know, I'll be wherever wherever I am, and that's okay. It's like that, like, the same message as that other one. Like, it's just... Yeah. We're, we're good, wherever we're we are. We're good, wherever you want to so. be. I think it kind of fits probably where these guys are feeling at in their mm-hmm. life right now. You know, they're kind of older... <laughs> gentlemen and we're probably just like oh, the gentlemen <laughs> we're just happy with where we're at and we're just gonna embrace you know just how things have come you know and just wherever whatever life will bring us we'll we'll just be ready for it i guess mm-hmm. so yeah i thought that was cool that neil just wrote this on the beach just this was how he felt at the time and just kind of this relaxed kind of feel to it you know so yeah and then you get those extra tracks that we talked about one's an alternate take of the track you love, the Right Where You Should Be, mm. which has Ross on vocals. And then the Weary One, uh, it's an I think it's more of like a demo version of the Weary One, maybe with a little bit stripped back uh, mm. compared to the one on the, the main record. So, 
And there you have it. The new trio album. The new Troika. New DMJ. <laughs> So I think an, in, sophomore. an interesting thing to discuss at, at the end here is like, how do you feel uh, this album is in comparison to their first album? Do you like it more, less, about the same? Um, I think about the same. I think that um, the first album, they, they were all so good. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, I think that there are standout songs on both of them that really just resonated with me. And for me, that's like what makes a song good is if it if it evokes some kind of emotion, I will be attached to that song for the rest of my life. And so yeah. um, it, it's it, I feel like some of the songs on the first album have that. And I feel like some of the songs on this album will have that as well. And um, all these songs I'm going to put in my shuffle list and, nice. and listen to them and um, all of them, you know, not just the ones that I feel like an emotional attachment to, yeah. but like all of them, because I think that they're all great. I think it, I think it's right on par with the first album and I loved the first album. Awesome. So. Yeah. I feel very similar. I think they're pretty equivalent albums. They're both, if you loved the first one, you're going to love this one just as much. Mm-hmm. I probably, maybe just because it's newer and fresher, I maybe even prefer this one slightly, but it's close. <laughs> See, if I were to lean one way or the other, I think I would lean more towards the first one. Yeah, but that's interesting. But still good. But still, like, yeah. Amazing. They're both amazing. Yeah, so, so. anyone who's a, a fan, you know, you may lean one way or the other, but I think regardless, you'll enjoy listening to yeah. this one and we'll find a lot to connect with and enjoy. If you like the first one, you'll like this one. Yeah, because I feel like for me... I feel like it was kind of them. The first one was a bit more experimental. Like they didn't really know what they were doing. Maybe they were leaning a bit more on like Neil's vision, but now they're more of a fully fledged group and Mm. they're each contributing their own stuff to it. And they did on the first record too, but I feel like it's just a little bit like they're a little bit more relaxed, a little bit able to give their more creative input. And maybe there's even a slightly more progressive or different flavors to this one than the Mm. first one, maybe. But you, you said the first album they did they didn't meet together to record they all did it digitally yeah they right? did it yeah Virtually. like remotely yeah but then this one they actually got together and recorded right no I think this is the same same thing same case oh. yeah they record it mostly separately they did come together briefly after the album was finished to like film mm. some of the like music videos and stuff okay. that come with it. But I don't think they sang on the album that's amazing together that they're in the same able room. to do that. Like, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So Yay, it'll technology. be interesting. Maybe in the future <laughs> uh, they can actually record together in the same room. But if it sounds this good, maybe they don't even really need to. I, I guess. mean, maybe they should just go ahead and play a concert on the cruise because <laughs> yeah. y'all will all be there. <laughs> be there they yeah they're might all as there well. yeah neil's gonna be there with flying colors nick's there with big big train and ross is there with haken so they're See? all in you're the all cruise. there <laughs> and i saw an interview with nick that he was basically like yeah we're gonna tour at some point like <gasps> he was really gung-ho on the idea of them touring together as a group but it's just a matter of matching all their various schedules because they're all in different bands doing different things haken's doing a big uh touring all next year so it might be hard to figure out how to get them all together but they seem excited to play together as a trio so that could be fun in the future maybe they'll come around our neck of the woods and maybe they'll do something surprising on the cruise i don't know but uh they haven't announced anything i bet (laughs) they will One could only hope. All right. So I think that that covers it pretty well. So we both love it. It's an incredible album, especially if you liked the first uh, Troika album. (laughs) I'm a massive fan of all three of these musicians. And so like they can do no wrong from from (laughs) my perspective. So I just love this. I I think it has a great folky singer songwriter vibe and it's cool switch of pace from their typical prog day jobs, I suppose. So definitely recommended, and hopefully you guys will check it out. So let us know in the comments uh, how you feel about this group, DMJ, and what they're doing. Uh, I believe this review will probably come out uh, right before the album's released, you know, so 
it'll probably be out this upcoming Friday, I believe. So you'll be able to hear it then. But there's definitely singles out that you can check out um, on their YouTube channel and all that kind of stuff. Streaming services. So definitely can get a taste for it. So thank you guys. And Yay. hopefully we'll catch you in a future episode. Thanks for letting me tag along. Yeah, I thought it was fun. So get two perspectives for the price of one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like one perspective and like a half of Oh, <laughs> don't sell yourself short. Uh, oh. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys. Enjoy the music. Bye. Bye.